They came as slaves. Vast human cargo transported on tall British ships bound for the Americas. They were shipped by the hundreds of thousands and included men, women, and even the youngest of children. Whenever they rebelled or even disobeyed in order, they were punished in the harshest of ways. Slave owners would hang their human property by their hands and set their hands or feet on fire as one form of punishment. They were burned alive and had their heads placed on pikes in the marketplaces as warnings to other captives. Now, do we really need to go into all the gory details? We know all too well of the atrocities of the African slave trade. But are we talking about the African slave trade? King James II and Charles I also led a continued effort to enslave the Irish. Britain's famed Oliver Cromwell furthered this practice of dehumanizing one's next door neighbor. The Irish slave trade began when James II sold 30,000 Irish prisoners as slaves to the New World. His proclamation of 1625 required Irish pol political prisoners to be sent overseas and sold to English settlers in the West Indies. By the mid-1600s, the Irish were the main slaves sold to Antigua and Montserrat. At that time, 70% of the total population of Montserrat were Irish slaves. Ireland quickly became the biggest source of human livestock for English merchants. The majority of the early slaves to the New World were actually white, something many people aren't taught in their school. From 1641 to 1652, over 500,000 Irish were killed by the English and another 300,000 were sold as slaves. Ireland's population fell from about one and a half million to 600,000, just in one single decade. Families were ripped apart as the British did not allow Irish fathers to take their wives or children with them across the Atlantic. This led to a helpless population of homeless women and children. Britain's solution was to auction them off as well. During the 1650s, over 100,000 Irish children between the ages of 10 and 14 were taken from their parents and sold as slaves in the West Indies, Virginia, and New England. In this decade, 52,000 Irish, mostly women and children, were sold to Barbados and Virginia. Another 30,000 Irish men and women were also transported and sold to the highest bidder. In 1656, Cromwell ordered that 2,000 Irish children be taken to Jamaica and sold as slaves to English settlers. Many people today will avoid calling the Irish slaves what they truly were, slaves. They'll come up with terms like indentured servants, this is to describe what occurred to the Irish. However, in most cases, from the 17th and 18th centuries, Irish slaves were nothing more than human cattle. As an example, the African slave trade was just beginning during the same period. It is well recorded that African slaves, not tainted with the stain of the hated Catholic theology and more expensive to purchase, were often treated far better than their Irish counterparts. African slaves were very expensive during the late 1600s, as they were 50 sterling. Irish slaves came cheap, no more than five sterling. If a planter whipped or branded or beat an Irish slave to death, it was never a crime. A death was nothing more than a monetary setback but far cheaper than killing a more expensive African. 
the English masters quickly begin breeding the Irish women for both their own personal pleasure and for greater profit. Children of slaves were themselves also slaves, which increased the size of the master's free workforce. Even if an Irish woman somehow obtained her freedom, her kids would remain slaves of her master. This means Irish moms, even with this newfound emancipation, would seldom abandon their kids and would remain in servitude. In time, the English thought of a better way to use these women, in many cases girls as young as 12, to increase their market shares. The settlers began to breed Irish women and girls with African men to produce slaves with a distinct complexion. These new mulatto slaves brought a higher price than Irish livestock and likewise enabled the settlers to save money rather than purchase new African slaves. This practice of interbreeding Irish females with African men went on for several decades and was so widespread that in 1681 legislation was passed forbidding the practice of mating Irish slave women to African slave men for the purposes of producing slaves for sale. In short, it was only stopped because it interfered with the profits of large slave transport companies. England continued to ship tens of thousands of Irish slaves for more than a century. Records state that after 1798, the Irish Rebellion, thousands of Irish slaves were sold to both America and Australia. There were horrible abuses from both African and Irish captives. One British ship even dumped 1,302 slaves into the Atlantic Ocean so that the crew could have plenty of food to eat. There's little question that the Irish experienced the horrors of slavery as much, if not more, in the 17th century as the Africans did. There is also very little question that those brown tan faces you witness in your travels to the West Indies are very likely a combination of Irish and African ancestry. In 1839, Britain finally decided on its own to end its participation in Satan's highway to hell and stop the transporting of slaves. While their decision did not stop pirates from doing what they desired, the new law slowly concluded. This chapter of nightmarish Irish misery. But if anyone, black or white, believes that slavery was only an African experience, then they have it completely wrong. Irish slavery is a subject worth remembering, not erasing from our memories. But where are our public and private schools? Where are the history books? Why is it so seldomly discussed? Do the memories of hundreds of thousands of Irish victims merit more than a mention from an unknown writer? Or is their story to be one that their English pirates intended to, unlike the African book, have the Irish story utterly and completely disappeared as if it never existed? None of the Irish victims ever made it back to their homeland to describe their ordeal. These are the lost slaves, the ones that time and biased history books conveniently forgot. If you want to know more about this subject, I honestly say that you should really check it out. As I found everything that I read today from Google, it was very easy to search. I just typed in white slavery and started reading. And there's so much on the subject, but yet so little is taught in schools about it. It makes me wonder if really there is some kind of cover up from or by who I don't know, but it's just another story of untold history. And it certainly is hidden.